spit over here. Did I sit over here for my last video? Because if I did, I'm sitting over here again. Because this bone is too heavy. Bring light up a notch. Hopefully y'all don't zoom into my leg. I'll be terrified, petrified. <laughs> Okay guys, what's up? It's me, Ren Lux, back with another YouTube video. And if you are a returning subscriber, what's up, king or queen? And if you're new to my channel, girl, why haven't you subscribed yet? <laughs> Today's video is going to be a highly, highly requested video. I've been getting this video request since I first started my freaking channel, which is like crazy. But anyways, today I'm going to be talking about how to grow a successful channel. We're going to get into this YouTube video without further ado comment like and subscribe and if you guys have any other tips for anybody that's looking to make a successful channel come on. Let's get to it. so i put everything in notes because like i said i have adhd so i tend and my notes are a little bit more extra than a, ran, a regular person's notes because like i said i have adhd so like i'll just it's terrible i hate it i really hate it here First, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go down and we're just gonna go. Okay, so first thing is equipment. Now, a lot of people feel like when you start a YouTube channel, you just need the best equipment ever, like a Canon Rebel T3, whatever that thing's called, a big ring light, big microphone over them. You don't need literally any of that, to be honest. As long as you have a good enough working phone and a good enough camera quality, you can really start your YouTube channel. And I really feel like the best investment you can make before a camera would have to actually be a ring light because a lot of people who start YouTube, some of them really don't even wanna do it. So you don't wanna put so much money into something you really aren't sure that you're interested in. So I say you should get a ring light because A, if you really do wanna do it, it's a good investment. And second, if say if you stop doing YouTube, it's still good to have for like pictures, or like snapchat videos so okay so the next question i get a lot is what do you edit on do you edit edit on a laptop do you edit on your phone like what do you use i edit on my phone and i i'm gonna give you guys the top best editors for to use on your phone now if you're not that tech savvy i suggest to use imovie just because imovie is a really simple get to the point type of editor okay so if you're not really tech savvy or you're not really, you're really new to the editing, these editors, you would really have to sit and take time and try to understand how to use them. So if you don't wanna sit there and just try to learn how to make your videos better by using these editors, then the iMovie is just a very to the point editor, very easy. That's a whole nother video. I can really teach you guys how to edit as well. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the screen for you. So we have Velo, perfect video, and then the easiest is iMovie, like I said. I use Velo, it's the best editor, I feel like. Velo, um, there is a pro version. I have a pro version and it's like $5, it's $6. So, the next one is thumbnails. So, what I use for my thumbnails is only two apps and I use Fonto and Pixart. Now, once you learn how to use Pixart, you'll realize that Pixart can create a lot of cool different thumbnails that the other bigger YouTubers are doing, but they're paying somebody a thousand dollars to do it. Pixar is a really cool, good app. And the more you use it, the more you realize it's like all these other thumbnail makers that, like I said, that's like a thousand dollars. Like it's basically a Photoshopping app as well. And it has so many different layers to it. But I started off with Instashot as well. That was my first starting off when I first started making thumbnails. And if I can find how I used to make thumbnails versus how I make them now, I put it on here because I just want to be really helpful, um, like informative for you guys and get in real detail. Um, and Fonto, like I said, if you want different fonts, you can also use, um, there's a thing, it's called dovefont.com. And basically you can use this and I'll teach you guys how to use this in a different video, but basically this helps you get different fonts for any of your apps. So you can use it for CuteCut Pro, all of that different things. And if you guys don't know what CuteCut Pro is, that's that's a whole different thing. So I'm gonna get into that later because that's also in my notes. But you can just transfer those fonts to anywhere and this gives you different unique fonts to choose from. Creating your own intro, Cute Cut Pro. Um, You don't have to create your own intro, but like I said, if you're tech savvy and if you really feel like you can do it, if you put your mind to it, you can really create your own intro. Intros go rank from five to, they shouldn't be longer than 12 seconds to me because I'm not gonna sit up there and watch it. 30 second intro. I just feel like a lot of people are out here paying people $30. I've seen a girl charge $15. 
for five seconds to 10 second intros and like they're charging so much for intros that they could literally make by themselves. So I say QCut Pro is a great, great app to make in your own intro, but QCut Pro is also very, it's not very, it's not like iMovie. It's not like one, two, three. You would have to sit down, sit down and watch tutorials on how to do certain transitions because it's very, you need to help yourself. You know what I mean? They give you the tools. You just have to learn how to do it. So there's a lot of different QCut Pro um, tutorials on YouTube. So you really, if you really don't want to pay anybody, because my intro, I made it myself using QCut. QCut, and I didn't even use Pro. I just used QCut because I didn't want to pay $5. So I just used QCut. So... I just feel like if you can do it yourself, you should try to do it yourself. And if you feel like mm, maybe this isn't for me, it's not coming out how I want it, then you should go to somebody else. Video ideas, which is very, very, very. What's your video idea? What's your video ideas? Like video ideas. I don't know what to post. I don't know what my niche is. There's different type of YouTubers from lifestyle to relatable to beauty to bloggers. There's so many different type of content creators on this app. So I feel like whatever you like, whatever you like to watch the most or whatever you feel like you're comfortable the most with doing, do it. Find your niche, explore your niche. Don't copy. There's a difference from finding your niche and getting inspiration and then copying a person. Like I said, I was trying to be Emma Chamberlain so hard it fucking scared me, okay? Don't do that. Be your authentic self. And that goes into my, that segues into my next topic, how to grow a following. How to grow a following. Keep posting, being authentic to your true self. Because even if you have the big lights and the camera and all that thing, people can tell when you're not being yourself. People can tell when you're not being authentic. And consistency is key. How I grew mine, I, when I first started my YouTube channel, I started my YouTube channel in May. So when I first started my channel, I loved it so much. I post it every day. Me and Makaya started our channel the same day, which is like, that's these. Okay, anyways. So we loved it so much that we posted every day. We wanted to post double a day. Like, we just loved it so much. It's all about consistency and stuff like that. So and next is appearance. I feel like it depends what type of YouTuber you are. Like I said, like, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. White girls get away with a lot of more stuff when it comes to how you look on camera versus black girls. Emma Chamberlain comes on camera looking like a hot dog all the time, okay? And that's her thing. It's her thing to come on camera with a scrunchie and chapstick. If a black girl does that, she won't get as much views. You get what I'm saying? Um, for me, I like to come on camera looking presentable, my hair done, my lips popping and stuff like that, just because it just helps myself confident. But like I said, it all depends on your content. If you want to be like, like a me type of YouTuber, like story times, hauls sometimes. I haven't posted a haul yet, but a haul is coming really soon, guys. You just want to come on camera looking like your best self. Seriously, you just don't want to come on here looking crazy. Good lighting also, because how else you're going to keep and grab an audience is good lighting. No one's going to sit up here and watch a video when your video is like this. Okay, I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> if your video is like this this isn't too bad but just imagine it darker no one's gonna sit up i'm not also that's another rule you need to go by you need to look at your videos and sit and watch your videos and say hmm am i gonna click on that if your answer is no then your video's trash you also want to look at your thumbnails and be like would i click on that if that was somebody else and if you say no then it's not good a nice clean put together background me personally i don't like backgrounds that have too much going on because it's gonna it's gonna make me not more so pay attention to the person talking i'm gonna more so pay attention to what the fuck is going on in the background make sure your background is nice and clean because also you don't want anyone to give room you don't want to give room to anybody to talk junk about how your life how your house is looking in the background me, I'm either filming in front of my bed or filming on this wall. So a nice, cool, clean background is always easy. And I also put, this is like a little quote, or I don't know. I also put, never compare your channel, but examine your channel on what you can do better and what you can improve on. As a small YouTuber, I do it too. It, you can always get caught up in comparing your channel. That's what you don't need to do. What you need to do is look at other people's channels that you love and be like, my channel can do that why am i not doing that i can do better you never want to compare yourself and bring yourself down because ultimately that's not going to do anything but make your confidence lower and another thing is everything comes with time and patience don't rush the process because at the end of the day if the algorithm didn't choose you today they'll probably choose you tomorrow or something you know what i mean you don't want to rush the process as long as you know you're putting 110 percent into what you love that's all that matters and then i lastly put don't overthink 
I want to film this video because a lot of people that ask me questions overthink the whole concept of YouTube. YouTube is very easy and I want to let you guys know when I first started my YouTube channel, I didn't really think about any anything you guys were asking me. Don't overthink because you're just psyching yourself out. Literally, you're giving yourself excuses on why you feel like maybe it's not ready. You're not ready to start a YouTube channel. Don't overthink and just do it. And that is it for this YouTube video. I hope you guys, I hope I really helped you guys. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask me. But like I said, please don't overthink it because the more you overthink something, the worse it gets. Like, it's like you looking at an outfit in the mirror. The more you look at it and you overthink how it looks on you, the more you're not going to want to wear it. You know what I mean? Don't overthink anything and just go with it. And that's it. If you guys enjoyed comment like and subscribe for more and yeah bye cut the cameras